Hey y'all, welcome back. Assalamu alaikum. We've got one more video today, and this is going to be a continuation of the Prophets and Messengers of Allah series that is from the um, Islamic Inspiration YouTube channel. And the title of this video is Idris or Idris. And I believe that is um, in the Bible that is um, Enoch. And um, I think that Enoch uh, foretold the coming of uh, Jesus Christ, and I think that he spoke something about the Holy Spirit, uh, something like that. I'm, you know, <laughs> like I, I say, I'm a Christian, and I should know these things, but um, it's just been so long since I have been interested, since I have looked, since I have listened. But that's just like my basic knowledge of it. And so again, I am um, extremely curious to uh, see from the Islamic perspective uh, what they have to say. So let's go, man and make mention in the book of the Prophet Idris. We raised him to a very high level. Idris السلام, was the first to take up arms against another army, to fight against injustice. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. Indeed, he was very truthful and he was a prophet. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen after Adam, the son of Adam, Shaykh. And then from Sheath, he had Anush, who was one of, his, one of his sons, who carried out his mission after him. Then after him, his son, Kenan. From there was Mihlail, and from Mihlail was Yarid or Yarid who took charge of his mission. And here the Quran, the next man or the son that came after him, the Quran mentions him. His name is Idris alayhi salam. Idris was born at the time of Adam. He was born when Adam alayhi salam was 840 years old. So Idris met Adam and Adam met Idris. Idris is the sixth grandson of Adam. In biblical terms, ancient names, he was called Enoch. He learned from Adam alayhi salam, he learned from, from Sheath alayhi salam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he said, Idris was a prophet. He was very good looking, he was very calm, he had a full grown beard. And he spoke very, very clearly. He was very patient. Idris alayhi salam was tall in stature, 60 cubits tall. And when he walked, his footsteps were long, they were big footsteps. That is a question that I have. <clears throat> he said it was um, uh, 60 cubits tall, and I believe that it was uh, Dr. Omar Suleimani that said that 60 cubits is roughly the length of two football fields, uh, so that would be like 600 feet tall. Do you guys um, know, and I'm, maybe we'll learn this as we go through the uh, Prophets and, and Messenger series, like at what point um, <clears throat> the human being downsized, you know, for the average height to be like, I don't know what it is today. I think it's five foot nine. You know, if you look globally, that's the average height of man. Um, like at what point that took place and um, <clears throat> like what was the purpose of us uh, downsizing? You know what I mean? Um, that's something I'm very curious about. Okay, let's go. And when he walked, his footsteps were long. They were big footsteps. They were similar to the footsteps of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he walked calmly. He spoke very little. That if ever he wanted to speak, he would speak something beneficial, words of wisdom, or he would be silent. And when he walked, it was not his nature to constantly look upwards. He used to look downwards, like a person who constantly was thinking. So he'd walk and he would think a lot, ponder a lot, contemplate a lot. And he is the first man to ever write with the pen. So writing before Idris did not exist until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught Idris how to write. And Idris alayhi salam is the one that taught people how to write. He came as a prophet not to stop people from shirk or to call them to the correct information, but rather to help stop and call people away from acts of corruption, which they knew were corruption, away from their desires, as we know, such as zina and the act of killing. The people of that time were all upon Tawheed. But they were committing many sins and ignorance was spreading among them. He strove so hard and he spread the message and reminded people so much to bring them back to the straight path. When he saw the corruption spreading, 
especially among the people of Qabil. And that corruption is spreading even within the people of Idris. So Idris alayhi salam declared war against the corruption. The first prophet and messenger to call for jihad fighting in the path of Allah was Idris alayhi salam. And he prepared an army of horsemen and people walking, fighting against the people of Qabil and the corruption of the people of Qabil. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave victory to Idris alayhi salam. Allah says, and mention in the book, in the Quran, Idris. He was a truthful prophet. And we raised him high in the heaven. What is meant when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we raised him high in the heavens. Abdullah ibn Abbas once asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu ta'ala anhuma about this verse. And we elevated him a high position. He asked him, what's this about Idris? So Ubay ibn Ka'ab said, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Idris one day that every day your deeds are equivalent to the good deeds of everybody else on the face of the earth. Over his own deeds, over his own rewards, over the good deeds of Idris, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also give him the rewards of all the people living at the time of Idris. With simple calculation, Sayyidina Idris said, if that is the case, then if I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me a longer life, I would be able to accumulate more good deeds. So he had a friend from the angels and he spoke to this friend. Why don't we speak to the angel of death? Let's see what he has to say. To say, look, just try and see if you can seek permission to prolong a little bit. So the angel says, look, that is a matter that is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, there's no harm in trying. Come, you ride on my wing and let's go. So Idris alayhi salam went on the back of this angel and flew with him all the way to the heavens. He crossed the first heaven, he crossed the second heaven, he crossed the third heaven. When he got to the fourth heaven, they met the angel of death who was descending down to the earth. So this angel told the angel of death that Idris is asking that if he could make him live longer, so this angel of death said, uh, where's Idris? Then this angel said, he is with me, he is also on the fourth heaven. Then Malakul Maut said, Subhanallah. So the angel told him, what's amazing? He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered me to take the soul of Idris in the fourth heaven. And I wondered how I'm going to do this. And Subhanallah, Idris came with one intention. Angel of death came with another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only happened what he wills. This angel speaking with the angel of death looked on his back and saw that Idris has already passed away and elevated him to a very high level. Nobody passed away in that level except Sayyidina Idris. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa confirms in Sahih al-Bukhari that when he went up for Mi'raj, he met Idris alayhi salam in the fourth heaven. After the death of Idris, corruption started to increase even more and more and more. And people still believing in one Lord, Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal the most high, Allah Azza wa Jal the most greatest, Allah Azza wa Jal the most strongest. So after the death of Adam, all the way up to 1000 years, 10 centuries, as the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said, people just worshipping one Lord, believing in one Lord. They believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then after that 1000 years, that's when changes start to take place. It became a big gap between Idris and the next prophet and messenger being sent. Few centuries, no prophet, no messenger. These prophets and messengers had very righteous, God-fearing, obedient followers. And when the prophet went, People start to look up to those followers. Respected followers, ulama, salihin, scholars, righteous people. People used to respect them. There were five very, very righteous individuals. And their names were Wad, Suwa', Yaghuth, Ya'uq, and Nasr. And at the time of Idris, when they had a problem, they used to go to Idris. After Idris, they start to go back to those righteous people. After the death of the righteous people, what happened? After they passed away, 
Shaitan sees the opportunity and now he begins his mission. He starts off by whispering in their minds, in the minds of the people. Shaitan said to them, you know, what a, what a wonderful person you are. What a wonderful. So Shaitan came and he grieved. Now you got to look at the Shaitan's tactics here. We should have a remembrance for this person. So how are you going to have a remembrance for this person if we don't quickly make something that reminds us of this person? Look, we need to do this. We need to remember good people like this and honor them. We need to do this. I've got a good idea for you. Why don't we get a rock? Just a rock. As a simple, maybe just looking at that rock will remind us about those good days. So some people at that time, it's acceptable. There's nothing wrong and maybe a good thing. We're not doing anything wrong. We still believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. We're not going to worship this rock. Just a, something to remind us of this righteous man. So people accepted that. Okay, so it looks like we're heading into the first incident of idol worship. That's where it looks like this is going right now, you know. And <clears throat> um, I, I had so many things going through my head as they were narrating this story about um, Idris being on the angel's back and then um, the angel of death meeting them in the fourth heaven and all that. I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be definitely considered haram to make a movie about these stories with visuals. Um, but, you know, when it's going off in your head, it's like so surreal. It's like, um, <clears throat> I don't know. And I don't mean this <clears throat> to go, like, like if you think of like the epic stories that we've seen in movies like Lord of the Rings, just things of that nature. Like I'm not comparing it in that fact because that's obviously like fantasy stuff. But if you made like a movie out of this, it would be so incredibly powerful. You know, I think that would probably be haram, but just the way these guys tell these stories, I'm telling you, man, I, I think you guys told me the same thing. Like when you're listening, it's like, like the most epic movie you can possibly think of is like playing in your mind. You know, it's, uh, it's just really enjoyable and it's really thought provoking. Okay, let's go here. Something to remind us of this righteous man. So people accepted that. And that generation that accepted this, they were wise enough not to fall into a deeper hole than that. Now Shaitan is very patient. He's got a plan. He sows the seed and he goes away. So he waited for that generation to pass. When the next generation came, he said, you know, you are the grandchildren of these, of these figures that went, ah, oh, what great grandfathers you had. You know these pictures, what you should do? You should take them and we should, we should honor them more. Respect them by carving out certain, you know, stones out of their shape of these heads. So they start to design and make out of the dust and mud and make out of rocks figures of human beings. When that generation passed and people forgot why exactly they had made those statues, he went to the next generation and said, you know, your forefathers, you don't know what they used to do. They used to worship these idols. These are statues. This is what brought them goodness. This rock is a symbol of wood. And this rock is a symbol of sawa. And this rock is a symbol of Yahus. He said, whenever they saw these idols, they worshipped the idols, so they became good people and goodness came in their direction. So after the second generation, third generation, people start to worship these rocks and believe that these rocks will get them closer to Allah. So the younger children who saw their parents going and sitting and making prostration and making dua towards the statues thought, you know, these are our gods. These are our gods. And they started to finally worship the statues. You know, it's crazy how that can happen is uh, a children just watching their parents and this can go on for generations. And they just um, assume that everything that they're saying and doing is, is true and righteous and getting them closer to God and um that's 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 a crazy thing that really happens in life you know and it can even happen with people that we think are our friends they can um they can just come across as the best of friends you know and then but they have and even if it's not even if they're not doing it intentionally it's like they can kind of have this influence on you to give you an improper perspective on certain issues in life and uh potentially even change your mind you know like thoughts of uh being like an atheist or you know agnostic or like performing these like ritualistic behaviors that are ungodly and things like that. 
Uh, that's something to always watch out for. But we, I mean, there's clear evidence that this happens all over the world. It's still happening now. It was happening back then. You know, it's um, it's just a crazy thing. All right, let's go. Are our gods, and they started to finally worship the statues. They completely forgot about Allah subhanahu wa taala, and they started to worship these five idols. And that's how the shirk started to spread, and the shirk took over the world. Now this was the point when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the first Rasul, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad, subhanallahu bihamdih, subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi. Oh man, I was hoping that would, uh, I saw the video was only like almost 12 minutes or something like that, but that was a great video. I wish it had given a bit more detail about Idris in there. And um, there was something I was thinking about too. They were going over about how he didn't um, often speak, but when he did, um, it was with uh, like wisdom basically. And, um, you know, he wasn't uh, walking around like at least the way that I understood it, like with his shoulders thrown back, just proud, just kind of looking at everybody. Because we, we know that he was um, a prophet, so we already know that he was like a strong man. I think that Mufti Mink had said that as well, you know, like a full bearded, strong, handsome man. Um, but like, yeah, and we, we see that in life too. I'm sure you guys have seen that where you'll see a guy that just kind of keeps to himself, uh, doesn't often say too much. But when he does speak, and even if it's not about religious matters, it could be about uh, you know, professionalism or work or business, but when they do speak, their words hold more weight because they've they've thought carefully over the course of even potentially months or years about that particular subject, and it's like they cut all the fat off of it and they just say the facts and like from like a very wise perspective. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've I've met definitely uh, quite a few people like that throughout my life, and I've and I've always respected them. You know, it's a uh, some of us are naturally introverts, some of us are extroverts, you know, and there's many extroverts that are great people too. Uh, but there's just a fun dynamic about that when there's like a quiet guy who doesn't speak much, but then when he does, it's like, whoa, you know, I just, I've always appreciated that. Um, <laughs> let me see here. It says the next video is 22 minutes. I'm kind of like locked in. I, I really want to do it tonight. I don't want to overload you guys. Um, I can't stay up too late tonight, but I'm, I'm really, truly enjoying this series uh, for two reasons. And <clears throat> one of them is, of course, I, I'm learning about the, the Islamic um, um, perspective on this, you know, and also to be able to compare what I can recall from the Old Testament, you know, from uh, the days when I was like, you know, in Bible study or uh, still very interested in Christian, you know, Christianity. So to be able to compare the two together, um, it's just really enjoyable uh, for me to do that and to, to uh, keep learning on this journey. So I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> you guys may see me one more time tonight. I'm not too sure yet, but uh, we will see about that. But uh, as always, I, I really appreciate you guys uh, watching and uh, sharing your thoughts in the comments and uh, your corrections and uh, just, you know, informing me on how, how things really are and what they're supposed to be. I really appreciate that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I will definitely be seeing you guys soon, if not tonight. Um, it'll probably be uh, tomorrow or Thursday. So uh, thanks again for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.